First, by way of introduction, my name is Bill Hosley. I've been engrossed in local history, museums, and historic preservation since my college years when I stumbled into the Sheldon Museum in Middlebury, Vermont, and spent much of my time there as an undergraduate, also exploring area house museums like the John Strong House and Rockingham Meeting House, shown here. After my junior year, I was admitted to the Historic Deerfield Summer Fellowship Program, a transformative experience. After college, it was off to Wintertour Museum for a graduate degree in material culture and museology. My first job out of grad school was as a curator, exhibition developer, and programmer at Wadsworth Athenaeum, where I assembled the team that developed an award-winning Great River Exhibition, the largest exhibition in the museum's history. An exhibition about Japan and Victorian America influenced how Japanese art uh, was taught and understood. The accompanying book was used as a college text at Brown and was recently cited as an important influence on an exhibition at Cornell Art Museum. My Colts Empire project involved a book, loan show, a public television documentary, an expansive array of tours and public programs, and a historic preservation initiative that spawned the Coltsville National Historic Park. Afterwards, I served as the executive director and creative leader at Connecticut Landmarks, overseeing improvements at nine historic sites, among which are the Nathan Hale Homestead and the 17th century Joshua Hempstead House in New London. We raised more than a million dollars to carry out a, using a mixture of interpretive and installation techniques. The house and family have astonishing documentation that enables thematic tours rich in specificity and authentic detail. Next, I was engaged in a three-year turnaround at the New Haven Museum. Founded in 1863, it was a museum with amazing collections and archives and a lot of challenges. The strategic plan we adopted on my watch offered transformative possibilities and substantial pedagogical potential with Yale University, where a fa facility was on campus. As part of my consulting work, I founded and launched Housing Our History, a Facebook site that contains several hundred museum reviews from Maine to Texas, mostly house museums and community-based historical organizations. I am a champion for local history in small museums, which I've visited and studied in the hundreds. The National Park Service kicked off the revolution in interpretation in the 1920s by adopting the Nature Guide movement from Europe to help people understand and appreciate it. It's the most exciting aspect of museology, the part I love and do best. There are countless approaches to interpretation. They're all based on deep immersion in content and a grappling with the context to bring content to life. The Hatfield Historical Society, shown here, may not have state-of-the-art facilities, but the spark of imagination, that's the acorn from Great Oaks Grow. The late Abbott Lowell Cummings wrote the book, and led the parade that turned period house restoration into a science capable of achieving painstaking accuracy. At Colonial Williamsburg, they used drama and first-person interpretation to bring their historic properties to life. House Museums Associated, clockwise from upper left, with Alexander Hamilton, Samuel F. B. Morris, Robert E. Lee, and Emily Dickinson, used design, object writ, multimedia orientation exhibits to begin the visitor experience. Historic New England's Eustace House uses a gal with short-form video and a changing exhibition space to tell the story of a painstaking restoration. On Staten Island, the Alice Austin House, an evocative time capsule, uses its subject's photography and LGBT relevance to bring the tour to life as a jumping-off point for its programming. The Olson House in Cushing, Maine, made famous by Andrew Wyeth, explores Christina's world, the backstory of the family who lived here and Wyeth's emotionally charged relationship with them, the house, and its environment. Skillfully trained docents in an environment almost devoid of furnishing, made riveting by interpretation. It's often about passion-driven people power, individuals with the training, curiosity, and communication skills needed to create a visitor experience you cannot take your eyes off. Here's Joan at the Penfield Homestead in Crown Point, New York. She lives and breathes Crown Point history. Here's Gus at the fabulous Whittier birthplace in Haverhill, Mass., the famous snowbound house where poetry lives and is made manifest. I didn't believe that Drayton Hall outside of Charleston, the flagship property of the National Trust, 
purported to be shown completely without furnishings could be a great visitor experience until I got there and was blown away by a tour where the guide painted a picture in every room, bringing the family and plantation to life with words and an astonishing architectural setting. We weren't allowed to take pictures inside, but the Motown Museum tour, featuring the two house houses where Motown Records was born and created its most famous music, was amazing. The guide essentially sang her way through the house and got visitors singing. The Tenement Museum in New York is a model thematic interpretation relying on the superrealism of its frozen and amber interiors and its scrupulously researched thematic tours that delve into the details with character sketches on sweatshop workers, Irish outsiders, food ways, a day in the life of the Rogarshevsky family, and more. At $25 per person, there are plenty of days when every time slot is sold out. The Schuyler Mansion in Albany, picking up on the excitement of Hamilton the Musical, has developed a Hamilton theme tour that is excellent. He married Schuyler's daughter in this house. They also have theme tours exploring slavery in 18th century New York. Speaking of slavery, Stratford Hall, the home of the Lees in Virginia, tour guide Martha shown here, I've seen African Americans doing first-person interpretation of slavery but never had a docent tour of a plantation by a black woman or man. She was off the charts, put it down in ways that write a new chapter on how to engage a tour group. In Connecticut, Windsor Historical Society's award-winning Strong Howard House combined exhaustive scholarship on place, property, and family with rooms furnished with reproductions in full touch it mode with theatrical dramatization, forging a distinctive path for a totally new kind of house tour experience. But the point is, the house museum genre is on fire interpretively, the most dynamic sector of the museum industry today. Then there is design and technology. I lecture on the art of exhibitry, usually not a big factor with house museums, but more and more, the learning that takes place in one context can influence others. The Johnstown Flood National Memorial in Pennsylvania broke the mold when, with its state-of-the-art, heavily mediated display and orientation film and how it uses its setting and landscape to tell its story inside out. An endless variety of hands-ons and interactives can shape interpretation. The Concord Museum takes a rich literary theme in the life of Henry Thoreau and mines it with depth and imagination. More modestly, the Susan B. Anthony birthplace in Adams Mass, they started with an empty house and almost no collections and have given it real life and substance without a lot of money. The Women's Rights National Historic Park in Seneca Falls, New York uses audio, video, interactives, and rich graphic design to interpret its big story. How much do I love this work? Every time I have an encounter with a docent or interpreter who obviously loves what they do and has been given information they need to bring a site to life, I love it more. Because the future of the past depends on it, I often say an ordinary field trip is more memorable and inspiring than the best days in a classroom. When it goes from ordinary to extraordinary, it can change lives. Lots of stuff matters and helps shape the kind of visitor experiences that are unforgettable. And remember, don't be boring. Our guests are under no compulsion to visit or rave about us to their friends. Make it meaningful and fun.